Praise the Lord, friends. I'm here with my good friends, Mark and Trina Hankins, and we're going to be sharing today on the spirit of faith. And Trina was healed of inoperable brain tumor years ago, praise God, and it was a miraculous thing. She's going to be sharing her testimony. You don't want to miss this broadcast, and they'll be talking about how you can receive your miracle from God by the spirit of faith. Praise the Lord, friends. I'm here with my good friends, Mark and Trina Hankins from Alexandria, Louisiana. And we're sharing today on the spirit of faith. Mark wrote a book on this and I love it. Praise God. And we're going to share some of these principles that you teach and that I teach. I've stolen some things from you. <laughs> That's all right. Amen. I love one thing I heard you say. I, you probably heard me. In fact, one time I was I, I'd preach something that you said, I don't know if I gave you credit, and then they made a billboard out of it and put it on Facebook, and you complimented God it. <laughs> with your teaching. Good job. But, but anyway, <laughs> you said the spirit of faith will make you swing out over hell on a corn stalk and spit in the devil's eye, praise God, <laughs> and it will help you overcome the enemy. Yeah, I got God. that from a, from a um, <laughs> Cajun redneck, and I was preaching on the spirit of faith, and, and he came up to me after and said, man... That makes me want to grab a corn stalk, swing out over hell, and spit in the devil's eye. I said, well, I never heard it that way, but I kind of know how you feel. In other words, the spirit of faith makes you fearless. Amen. You know, the faith and fear are polar opposites. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. And so... The spirit of faith speaks. We're going to be sharing yeah. about this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And really in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul's talking about dealing with adversity. Yeah. Sometimes people think when we teach the word of faith that we're saying there is no adversity. Yeah. But there is adversity. There yeah. are challenges. But we overcome through the word yeah. of God and through the confession of our mouth. And we're going to talk yeah. about that. And yeah. uh, Trent is here today. I'm so pleased to have Trent. Thank you. It's good and to be I've here. I've known Trent's dad for years and years and years. So over 30 years ago. Yeah. Uh, actually, I went to his church in Burlington before that, probably close to 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. oh, and uh, the years you were preaching up there that, mm -hmm. that, that time. But then when I started pastoring in Kit Carson, he was in Burlington. I remember I went to see Brother Beerman. Yeah. And he, he gave me some counsel, but he was... He was actually, he'd built a new church and he was up on the ladder putting a sign on the wall. And so he came down, he took me down to the truck stop. He drank a coffee and I drank a Pepsi. Yeah. Praise God. And Great pastor. I had, yeah, I had somebody that was mad at me in the oh, church. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it just seemed like they couldn't get over it. And he said, listen, there was this lady and he'd been in Burlington then about 25 <laughs> years. He said, she, she came to our church early on and she, he said, to tell you the truth, she really didn't like my wife. He said, uh -oh. my wife probably didn't like her much. Either. Yeah. But he said, we yeah. just love them all. And he said, she's still in the church after 27 there years. Go, Praise yeah. God. But you just got to love everybody. And he just encouraged me. Mm -hmm. I know one time I was worried about you know, somebody not liking me. I was in Kit Carson. You know, there's only a handful of people. We yeah. had about 100 people in church, I'm, and there's I'm 300 there. people in town. <laughs> yeah. And and uh, I mentioned this, something to Andrew Womack, and and I had actually preached at a church in South Texas, and it was a church of several hundred people and uh, 803 average attendance the year before. They kept all the stats. Okay. But uh, they were considering having me come. He said, now, Lawson, if, if you go to that church, you're going to have about 300 people that don't like you. So, <laughs> so just don't worry about it. You just keep pleasing Jesus. Yeah. And that's been a life lesson, you know. We just yeah. we just keep pleasing Jesus. But Trina, you had a wonderful miracle years ago. You had an inoperable brain tumor. That's and right. And God healed you. He did. Yeah. And uh, it was the spirit of faith. Praise Bottom God. line. You know, years ago, I had asthma, and I got a hold of the message of faith. Somebody gave us a stack of books by Brother Hagin, and I learned that we have authority as believers mm -hmm. and that you can take the word like medicine. And so Amen. I began to do that, and I was healed from asthma. But those same scriptures that I meditated on all mm -hmm. those years and beefed up my faith and, and gave me a, a spirit of faith, which Praise is God. believing and speaking Amen. the word of God. Uh, 
really came into play when I had an inoperable brain tumor. What I happened know. was uh, I had a um, seizure, and while I was out, they took me to the hospital. I woke up in the hospital room, and Mark was there. The doctor was there, you know, and I thought, before I woke up, before I opened my eyes, you know, when you put the Word of God in your mm -hmm. heart and you meditate, mm -hmm. it's there. You Praise planted God. a crop of the Word of God, and this word came up in my heart like, himself took your infirmities and bore your sickness, and mm -hmm. with his stripes you were healed. Amen. The strong spirit of a man mm -hmm. will sustain his infirmity. So when I um, opened my eyes, I, w I already had the shield of faith. Praise God. Coming up. You already had the word from God. Amen. So the doctor, he says, Amen. it appears that you have an inoperable brain tumor. So those, to me, it sound, it was like a, a, a arrow right. from the devil, you know, just right. fear and doubt coming. Um, you have an inoperable brain tumor. But if you have the spirit of faith, you have the shield of faith. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And that shield of faith just quenched that that word Amen. that report that evil report that came Amen. to me and i never entered into that fear praise god i was just full of faith even i didn't know what was the future held but praise god i have faith Amen. Yeah. praise the lord you know we have the exact same faith of jesus and i'm exactly. sure we'll talk about that this week um in mark chapter 11 verse 22 to verse 24 but um you know the word of god was on the inside of you yes I know one of the times you came to Colorado Springs and your jet got grounded for some reason. There's a blizzard and you called me and asked me to drive you over yeah. to Buena Vista. And I had been through a terrible loss in the cattle business. I mean, we had lost over a quarter million dollars and it was just, mm -hmm. it was just hard for me just getting out of that situation, you know, and God had spoken to me and he told me, look at what you have, not what you lost. And I was thanking him and praising him for every good thing in my life. And, you know, we overcame that. In fact, I found out, you know what? If the enemy comes, right, it's the enemy that comes to steal. But if a thief's found, he has to repay seven times. So I, I got that quarter billion back seven times over, praise God. Mm -hmm. So if the devil ever tries to beat me, I just beat him back, praise just God. And we, back. Just, we just keep believing God. We keep going forward. But as we were driving to Buena Vista, and I was sharing this, uh, Trina, you began to share a word with me uh, from Proverbs about you know, wealth being in a righteous person's house. You know, there's treasure to be desired and much oil in the house of a righteous man, so on and so on. And that just ministered. It was like healing to my soul. Praise God. And you know what? You got the victory in your spirit when you're born again. Yeah. You already have the victory. You already have the healing. You already have the blessing. You already have the peace. You have everything you need in your spirit. But you got to renew your mind to that. And it's so important what we focus on. But I remember on that journey, as you begin to speak that word, it just changed my focus. It healed my soul. And that helped me overcome in that area and get over yeah. that. You know, sometimes when you go through a loss or a difficulty, there's a, there's like a overwhelming, yeah. you know, sense of loss. But it helped me overcome that grief, really. Psalm 107 verse 20 is a scripture Mark and I just love because it says this. He sent his word. And it healed them. Amen. And so the answer to whatever problem we face, he will send his word. He will, And in the word Amen. is the power to perform whatever it is that we need. Praise God. Praise God. So Amen. that's what you received that day. Amen. That Praise word, you know, and the word just, it, it just strengthens and helps us. Oh well, to, to make sure we finish the story. The story. Those was that, I'm still uh, here. <laughs> that we spoke to the brain tumor, according to Mark 11, 23. Mark came in the room and, and uh, he just spoke to it. used Mark 11, 23 and spoke mm -hmm. to the tumor. And uh, then uh, the doctor said, well, we still want to do surgery and see what kind of tumor it is. I said, well, okay, do what you feel like you need to do because on all the tests it had shown that tumor. So she went in, and after about five or six hours, they went into her brain mm -hmm. uh, five or six times. And after five or six hours, the doctor came out and said, well, Pastor, he said, um, I don't know what to tell you, but that tumor has disappeared. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. All <laughs> along, he's just sent his word. You know, as you're facing a challenge. We were facing an inoperable brain tumor. He sent his word. And no, Mark no. would speak the word. And as I was going into that surgery... He sent another word, and it was uh, Romans 8, 11, that the same spirit that raised, that raised Christ Jesus, Jesus from, the, from dead. the dead 
dwells yeah. in you, he will quicken mm -hmm. your mortal body. So Amen. I took that word and I mm -hmm. began to rejoice over it. Amen. I went into surgery laughing. Hallelujah. Praise <laughs> God. Because I was just now, envisioning what happened the when you got power. in surgery? <laughs> <laughs> there was a meltdown. It was a supernatural meltdown. So, so Hallelujah. So the word works mightily. And Amen. so rather than just um, asking God to heal you or even believe that, that it's the will of God for you to be healed, you take the word exactly. and mix faith with the word because mm -hmm. there's healing in the word. And so putting the word in your mouth, which is part of the spirit of faith Amen. that uh, we have, Paul said, that's what we have. Uh -huh. He didn't say we're trying to get it. He didn't say someday we're going to get it. He said, this is what we have. So if you just sit Paul down, interview him and say, Paul, what is it that you have that keeps you from collapsing with all the adversity that you've been through? Exactly. Paul would say, let me tell you what we have. We have the same. Amen. identical spirit exactly. of faith. Same. We believe and therefore we speak. And so Paul mm -hmm. said, that's what I have. But he said, that's what we have is the same identical spirit of faith. In yeah. other words, the spirit of faith works the same. First of all, I'm a believer. Second of all, I must speak. In other words, believing and speaking yeah. open Amen. the door to the supernatural. Amen. Amen. So when you believe something at a heart level, you're going to speak that. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, yeah. the mouth yeah. speaks. And he said, by your words, you're justified. Mm -hmm. And by your words, you're condemned. In Matthew right. chapter 12, verse 34 and verse 37. So if you are really believing something from your heart, you cannot help but share that and speak that out of your mouth. Now, if I'm correct, when the doctor went in and did this surgery, they couldn't find a tumor. The tumor disappeared. <laughs> yeah, they, they just hunted and looked because it was on every test. It showed up on the MRIs, mm -hmm. every single test that they had taken that whole week. And uh, they could not find it. Praise of course, God. you know, a brain surgeon is like scratching his head. What? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Everything showed it. But, when it, you know, I have a man here and he uh, actually about six months ago, yeah. one of the men in the church said, hey, Pastor, I need to take you over to talk to this person. And so I went over to talk to him after service. It was after our 1030 service on Sunday morning. And uh, he said, Pastor, you remember about a year ago, I came up and had you pray and I had a, I had a brain tumor. Mm. I said, yes. And so he got out his phone and he showed me a picture from a year ago. He said, that's a year ago. Wow. And this is now. Wow. There's the tumor a year ago. Praise the Lord. There it is now. There's no tumor. Amen. And God, no, no medical intervention. Mm. God supernaturally healed him. And we've had this actually happen with a lot of people. And I've prayed for a lot of people with cancer. Not every person I've prayed for with cancer has been healed, but a lot of people. And what I do, I speak, like you said, I speak to the cancer. I speak to the tumor. Deuteronomy 28, 27 it includes in the curse, emrods, which are tumors, which is cancer. Mm -hmm. So I, I curse the cancer. That's how I pray. Mm -hmm. And and I tell them, Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Galatians chapter 3, yeah. verse 13, and then verse 14, so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus, that we mm -hmm. might receive the promise through faith. But then the promise of the Spirit through faith. But then I also pray Romans chapter 8, verse 11. So I curse the cancer, and then I pray in Romans 8, 11, and I, I command it to go into remission, but the same spirit from Romans 8, 11 that raised Christ from the dead dwells in them and quickens their mortal body. So we've got victory. We're gonna take a, just a short break, and we'll be back in just a few seconds. Blessings. Friends, I've been teaching with two of my greatest friends, Andrew Womack and Jesse Duplantis. And we taught with Andrew on the revelation of grace and then with Jesse on insights to faith. You don't want to miss this great teaching. That is the heart of the gospel. Grace, what Jesus has done, and faith, our positive response to it. Blessings. My cool fear free, like five to six, mother goat, and the stars hurling so bad. I need to decide, I pray with God. He says, Lord, I'm the boy for my foot, good matter. When he, he says it like this, by the PayPal's, I said, yes, Lord, I missed off. And now I'm healed. And now I start walking and I'm really happy. Praise the Lord, friends. We're back, and we've been sharing on the spirit of faith. We haven't got very far in the Word. We're just <laughs> testifying. Isn't it amazing, all the testimonies 
that we have yeah. from the Word of God. But let's get into this in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13. You quote it, we having the same yeah. spirit of faith. The exact same spirit of faith. Yeah. The exact same spirit of faith as Jesus, yeah. I believe. Yeah. According as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. Yeah. So what you believe, you're going to speak. Yeah, actually the spirit of faith, um, I like to say it this way. There's three kinds of people. There's pioneers, settlers, and museum keepers. Yeah. <laughs> so a spirit of faith is really a pioneer spirit. A pioneer is someone who is constantly pressing for new territory. Amen. Constantly, Paul said, I forget those things which are behind. I'm pressing for those things that are ahead. That means when you have a spirit of faith, you believe your best blessings haven't even happened yet. Amen. They're still ahead of you. Amen. And so the pioneer spirit, number one, is constantly pressing for new territory. So that would be fresh revelation, uh, the direction and new territory. And so then uh, the spirit of faith is a pioneer spirit, which means you are constantly preparing the way for those who will follow you. Amen. So many are watching you and your spirit of faith is taking you right into the will of God, the plan of God, the prep promises of God, the purpose of God. And so God is a faith God, it says in Hebrews chapter 11. Without Amen. faith, it's impossible to please him. Amen. And so the spirit of faith is, I believe, believing is the attitude of faith. Amen. So when you have a spirit of faith, you have a certain attitude. Amen. You walk with an attitude, talk with an attitude. <laughs> what is that attitude? It's a positive attitude of Amen. expectation of the goodness of God. Now, one of the first times I heard you preach, you offended me a little bit. <laughs> and I, I got this. Now, listen, you're one of my best friends. In fact, we put you on my church board. Aaron, my son, and my daughter-in-law, Heather, they wanted to have you on the board for two years. God worked out the situation yeah. so that could happen. So we're really, really happy to have you on the well, board. How did ministry. I offend you? I mean, what, what was Well, it? This, this is what it was. And then, and then later, now you're one of my best friends, and you've really helped me. Praise God, you've helped me overcome some religious thinking. But, but I, I thought, he seems like he's arrogant. But he it was a little bit. Right, but it's not <laughs> arrogance. You know, the, the fact is, it's an attitude. It's an attitude of faith. It's because you understand yeah. who Christ is, and you understand who you are in Christ. It's confidence and a boldness. The right. Goes. I'm sure I've offended a lot more than one person. <laughs> <laughs> so really, when you have a spirit of faith, you do have an attitude. Right. I mean, it's like David running at Goliath. I mean, he showed up with an attitude. Right. He had to kill a lion, kill a bear. He said, well, who, y'all letting this guy talk to you? I mean, this right. is a, a giant killing attitude because he <laughs> knew he had a covenant with God Amen. and he knew Goliath did not have a covenant with God. Amen. And so that attitude of faith Faith uh, gives you such confidence, not not arrogant. You, none of us should be arrogant, but confident that God is our God and that he will watch his word and perform it. Amen. So, so if the spirit of faith doesn't affect your attitude, then you're not even you're probably not, You're probably not operating in yeah, the spirit yeah. of faith. So, this, so. I, I believe, and then that attitude is in your voice, I speak. Right. I believe and I speak. So that is the spirit of faith, and it is the Amen. same. In other words, you can't come up with a different, <laughs> some different thing about it. It's the same. It's, it's the same Old Testament, the same New Testament. We have a major attitude of faith. Yeah. Praise God. Joshua and Caleb had a major attitude of and faith. They were well able. To Praise God. Them. And it changed. You know, faith in God will make you one in a million. Think about yeah. this. You know, God told Moses, I want you to go pick 12 of the best men you have, one from every tribe. What, every man a leader. Yeah. So he picked 12 out of 2 million, Wow! right? And, and then Moses knew the tendency of the average person is to focus on the negative, not to focus on what God said. So he told them very specifically, now you go in the land and you look at the trees and you look at the fruit and you look at the cities and mm -hmm. you look at the people and be of good courage. Yeah. He told them very specifically yeah. what to believe. But when they came back, only two of them really had that major yeah. attitude of faith, that spirit of faith, Joshua and Caleb. Wow. And, uh, you know, faith will make you one in a million. Praise God. So very interesting, Joshua and Caleb. Again, you see the spirit of faith and uh, you see the believing and the speaking part. And uh, 10, of the, 10 of the guys who went in there said, we are not able right. because there's giants in the land and we look like grasshoppers. Right? <laughs> and so then two, Joshua and Caleb said, we are well able. Let us go up at once and possess the land. So the question to us years ago when we were studying faith was, 
Oh, which one of them got what they said? We were like, well, Joshua and Caleb. Now, the truth is they all got what they said. That's right. The ones who said we can't did not. The ones yeah. who said we can did. In other words, I believe, but your faith cannot be silent. Right. I believe and I speak. And right. so you have an attitude of faith, of expectation, of confidence in God right. and in the blood covenant. Right. And then I speak. And so the spirit of faith just has those two main ingredients. I believe, I speak. I believe God. I believe the word of God. I Amen. believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. I believe in the indwelling Holy Spirit. I believe and I speak. And right. that is the, the inner workings of the spirit of faith. You know, when you get a revelation of something on the inside, you can't help sometimes except say some things. Yeah, you have I to. I mean, it'll, it'll, just, it'll just come out of you. Yeah. I remember when we came to Colorado Springs, you know, and, and we were trying to buy a house and we were moving from Kit Carson and we had a contract on our house to sell it and we were trying to buy a house here. And we looked for like five months mm -hmm. and then we found this house. It was a great deal, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. But we, we went to six different banks before we found a banker that would loan us money wow. with 50% wow. down wow. uh, to buy this house. And um, it was crazy. But when we went to the first banker, we were talking to this one realtor. She said, you got to go talk to my banker and get approved. So we went and we sat across the desk from this banker, Barbara and I. And, and she pulled out my 1040s. You know, she pull, pulled out my last yeah. three years income <laughs> statements. And she looked at them. And we were trying to buy a, a, lot, a house over in the southwest of Colorado Springs, over, you know, near the Broadmoor, just in District 12. We wanted to put our kids in that school district. And we were starting the church in that area. When we first started, we were over in that area. And um, I remember this banker, she looked at my 1040s and she said, why? You can't even afford to buy a lot in this school district, <laughs> let alone a house. And I kind of stood up and I said, if I couldn't do it, I wouldn't be here, you know, but it wasn't, the, you know, God had spoken to me first of all, right? You and, couldn't be silent. And then, you know, I went to a, a Andrew Womack ministers meeting and some people, Cecil and Lisa and Paxton that know us, and I'm on Cecil's board now at major things that we've done together. But, but Lisa had given us a word. They didn't know anything about this. And they said, you're going to make a move and, and God's with you and what God's put in your heart. And it, is mm. good for you, it's good for your family, it's good for the body of Christ, it's mm. good for the church, you need to do it. And, and so they had are, and we were looking at this specific area to buy a house. At that time, we thought, well, maybe we can't get one, but when they, you know, that just renewed that word. So when I went into this banker that sat across mm. the desk that was looking at the natural situation, mm. my 1040s, and telling me that I couldn't, when God had told me, I already told me, yeah. And then confirmed his word, mm. you know, through this person, through, a, you know, really a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. I, I said, you know what? I am not going to let any little old banker argue. Mm. Well, she wasn't a little old banker. She's kind of a big head. <laughs> but, but I'm not going to let her tell me that I can't. And it's just like she was what she was. It's like she was like the devil speaking over there. Yeah. And God had already spoken to me and already had the word. So if I said I couldn't do it, I wouldn't She probably be there. thought you sounded a little arrogant. Well, I, well, but you it know, was a spirit of faith we just uh, up. stood up and then walked out. And Barbara's <laughs> like, well, you embarrassed me. Well, you know what? I wasn't trying to embarrass my wife. I wasn't even trying to be rude to that banker. But that banker was saying something different than what God had already spoke yeah. to my spirit. And I, you, listen, it was a major challenge for us to move from Kit Carson to Colorado Springs. Yeah. And, you know, you're dealing with all these challenges in the natural realm. And then to move where God told, it cost 50 more thousand in District 12 at that point in time to, to buy yeah. a house that it yeah. did across the line because the better school district, so on and so forth, was, which was very good for our children mm -hmm. and them fulfilling their destiny. But yeah. see, God had spoken to us and we'd begun to look and it looked like we couldn't and mm -hmm. we kind of, but then God's, you know, get, confirmed that word, you yeah. know. And Lisa Paxson actually gave us that word. And you know what? We moved into that, praise oh, God. Wonderful. We bought that house. And you know what? I, I, after a while, I owned three houses all on the west side of Colorado Springs. I sold that one wow. last year and d over doubled mm -hmm. my money. And, but then I owned the office building and monument. You know, we didn't have, we had almost, we started this church with one blind man and his wife, Mike and Mary Peterson, wow. and Greg, for, Greg Trapp. And, you know, then Greg got married. Barbara said the church doubled. <laughs> But, you know, we started with almost no people uh, and no money, and now we've been here for but, 20 but if you, years. If you think about it, really, it was a spirit of faith that brought you out of Kit Carson and brought you into Colorado Springs. Amen. And you can see where the Lord has brought you from, from Kit Carson and that step of faith and you pressing 
And as you begin, as you believe and speak, the Lord brought you into, really it affects not just what you receive from God, but it affects the divine destiny upon your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. In other words, maintaining, Paul said, we have that spirit of right. faith. And maintaining that, not that he was without adversity. You study the apostle Paul, no one had more adversity than the apostle. Well, and right there where he's talking about it in 2 Corinthians 4, maybe we'll get into it later this week. There's so much we haven't even got through the one scripture in this first session. But, but um, he's talking about how you overcome and how you get the things, you know, yeah. you're, you're pressed on the outside and you yeah. have this temporal realm, but yet yeah. you have the spiritual realm and how yeah. you move, you know, through the challenges that are in the temporal, the mm -hmm. physical realm by the power of the Holy Spirit yeah. on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. And that power of the Holy Spirit is a spirit of faith. Yeah, and so if you go a little further in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he says, we have the same spirit of faith. And then he goes, for we do not faint, he says, because our outward man is, is, is perishing or ad, having adversity. Our inward man is renewed day by day, which means the spirit of faith must be a daily renewal. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then verse 18, he says, while we look not at things that are seen, right. but at things which are not seen, things that are not seen are eternal. So the spirit of faith is an inward man renewing, and it is a constant uh, eternal perspective. In other words, not focusing on the scene, but seeing the unseen and declaring that the unseen is greater Amen. than the seen. Praise the Lord. So we've been sharing on the spirit of faith with Mark and Trina Hankins. This is his book, The Spirit of Faith, and you can go to his website, markhankins.org, and you can get this, or we will offer it in a package with some things that we'll be teaching. But thank you so much for tuning in to the broadcast today. If you need prayer, give us a call. We would love to hear from you. We appreciate you staying tuned, and we have people ready to receive your calls. Blessings. In the Grace and Faith Package, which includes Revelation of Grace and Insights into Faith, you'll learn about how grace and faith can empower you to succeed in life. We'd like to bless you with a digital copy of each teaching, a $26 value, free of charge. Download them today at charischristiancenter.com. Friends, the scripture says, if you will continue in the word of God, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. If you go to our website at charischristiancenter.com, you can get all of our materials there on the website as you watch them, as you listen, absolutely free of charge. And we've done that just to be a blessing to you. And I believe that the word that has freed me will free you. Blessings. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.